Welcome to our two or super is existing comic book talk is your norm. It's your boy Mo Crosby. It is another Game of Thrones uh, episode review and recap, or recap and review, whichever way you guys like to hear it. I'm going to be recapping season seven, episode five, East Watch. So sit back, relax, and as always, welcome to the planet. All right, this episode is called East Watch, but I want to continue what I started calling like. Uh, Game of Thrones last week. I think I, I called it a reunion episode because this is a reunion episode of the East Order. We get a lot of people coming back. We get a lot of people being re reunited. But in in addition to that, we get a lot of revelations and foreshadowing and just a lot of things that people may not have known or people may have missed. So what I want to do is start with the most obvious one, the most obvious thing that anyone may have missed. So I'm going to go to the Citadel and start over there. Now... If you remember in the episode while you were watching when Sam had talked to the maesters and then he went back to his room and he was studying and Gilly was you know telling asking him all these questions, he was he was pretty upset because they weren't listening to him. Now Gilly said something to him that Sam even Sam himself brushed off. A lot of people may have brushed off. I think I saw someone on Twitter say, "Why is this girl disturbing him? Let him keep studying." Because everyone is thinking Sam is trying to find the um. You know the the secret or the truth to the night walk walkers or the night kings. We already know how they formed, uh, how the night king was formed. But you know, it, it Sam cured your uh, jar a couple episodes ago, so Sam just studies to find things that no one else finds. Now, Gilly said to Sam or asked Sam this question: What is an annulment? Sam said it's when you you know let go of your your old wife. And Gilly now said, the Mad King annulled his marriage to Elia Martell and stopped there because Sam had, you know, gotten in his feelings and started yelling. Now, this may have been something very interesting. This may have been the biggest revelation of everything because this is the only time that maybe Bran didn't reveal anything to us. So, I'm going to ask this question right now. Could that have been, you know, a call back to the, hey, look, this is the R plus L, you know, uh, but, but, but that changes everything. Now that says, instead of R plus L, it is the Mad King, Daenerys' older brother, right? As opposed to Rhaegar. So, you might be looking at, you know, something totally different. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be looking at something totally different. If I'm wrong, please correct me down in the comment section below, but I know I'm not wrong. Um, but I feel like I'm not wrong, rather. Anyways, so moving on from that, uh, I'm going to leave the Citadel because at the end of the day, Sam gets upset, goes into the, you know, library, takes some books, packs everybody up, you know, even little Sam, and moves everyone out. Both, I think we're going back, Sam is going back to the wall, either going to go to Winterfell. So we're going to, you know, find out what Sam is doing and where Sam is going. We're going to move from that point, and we're going to, because I talked about John, we're going to land, we're going to go back to, you know, last week's episode where last week's episode ended where Daenerys does her best Cersei impersonation swear fealty to me bend the knee or die it's a choice choices are good but that is not a, you know a choice you get to men who have surrendered literally surrendered you have them surrounded you know they're, they're done and then you end up burning up Sam's brother and father and Sam doesn't know yet I wonder what Sam is going to do when he finds out that his brother who his dad who he may not who doesn't like him but Sam holds no ill will towards his dad and his older brother, who he probably loved, you know, to a, you know, love because they, you know, brothers have a different relationship than parents do. So whom he probably loved is dead and is dead because of John's uh, uh, either aunt or or something weird. So, um, yeah, we're going to find out a lot of things. So that's, you know, some foreshadowing left to happen. Uh, you know, she lands Drogon in front of this is the most, if not the most obvious thing. You know, because if, 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 uh, 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 um, John, you know, if, if John is the Mad King Agar's, uh, 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 um, King Agar's, um, son, as opposed to Rhaegar, if he's Agar's son, now, this gives John more of a claim to the Seven Kingdoms than Daenerys, because he is, like, more, he's directly, he's the son of the Mad King. That's one. And then she lands the Drogon in front of John, and John reaches out his hand and, and pets him. But the other thing is, Tyrion petted, you know, the dragons when he went to go release them in the ring. 
Now, if okay, so this is very very tricky. Could you know? There's also the rumor flying around that Tyrion might be a bastard, a, a Lannister, a, a, not not a Lannister, a uh, Targaryen bastard, and that's why he was able to pet and release the dragons when and they didn't do nothing to him. If that's the case, we're gonna get to see all three of them ride the dragons, maybe this season or next. So that could be you know some something pretty interesting. Um, moving forward from that, look, I know I'm not the only one who noticed it, but. John and Daenerys were giving each other the eye this whole entire episode. Like this whole entire episode, John and Daenerys are looking at each other like, "It's good, it's good." Like even up to the point where John is like, "Well, she's like, well, I didn't give you permission to go." And John is like, "I don't need your permission." Like he, she said that because she didn't want John to leave because she, you know, started having these emotions or feelings towards John. It, it, it's kind of super weird. But then Jorah's back, and there's there's tension there also. And Jorah's like super old, so that's even weirder. Um, love triangle maybe? We don't know. This show's kind of pretty weird like that. Uh, J. Um, somehow they come up with this plan that let's go north, capture a walker, and bring the walker to 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 the um to Cersei and hold some type of amethyst. So that way, you know, if we do an amethyst, we can all now come together and and fight them, and then you can come back and do your war. I'll just you know I'll help you. I'll support you if you support me in this endeavor. Stupid plan. Very, very dumb plan. I don't know why that would work. And it's messed with the warp part about it is you have Tajor who just came back and reunited saying, you know what? I'll go. What? You just got back. Can we have a little Jorah and and, 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 and can we have some, some, some Jorah action? No, no, we're not going to get that. We're going to get Jorah fighting instead. Fine, whatever. That's fine. We can do that. But another important person came back this week, uh, you know, reunited with the group this week, um, Genji. And this happened because because uh, Tyrion feels Jaime would listen to him, and so he goes to King's Landing to, to tell Jaime into letting into creating this thing so that they can all sit down and talk. It was a very very good reunion, in a way, because they, you can tell that Jaime loves Tyrion. Like Jaime has this love for Tyrion. That's my brother. I love you and all that good stuff. But you killed my dad. I don't know how I feel about that, but I, I'm not gonna hurt you, I should punch you, I should try to hit you, nothing, but I'm not going to do that because I love you, and they were mean to you, they were horrible to you, everyone's been horrible to you all your life except for myself, you can see that, um, he's hurt because of his dad dying, but he still loves his brother, uh, turn around, and we have, uh, um, so, Jamie goes to talk to Cersei, and he sees Pyburn, who I don't trust at all, even up to this point, I still don't trust Pyburn, um, <clears throat> everything going on with that and, and you know he's like and she he tells Jamie uh, Jamie tells Cersei Cersei's like hey and I already knew are you gonna punish Braun and he probably will you want to know why because Cersei's pregnant Cersei being pregnant is just kind of disgusting saying that she's going to tell the people that it's his it may not be his it might be Highburn to be honest because he's around her a lot Anyways, that's disgusting. That whole you know sister brother relationship that's really disgusting. We move, and I'm gonna be quick with that, and I'm gonna move back to the short. We see uh, um um John's hand, like show you why he was the best smuggler in in in, in all of Westeros and all the Seven Kingdoms. He brings everyone in. He t he talks. He finesses. He pays off the guards. He's just really nice with it, and then. Tyrion shows up, messes everything up, but then we get to see Gendry say, you know what? Nah, I'm about to wreck house. Gendry wrecks house, like destroys. Gendry has this nice little war ham hammer that he uses to smash people's head in. I love seeing that. Um, we turn away from that and we go to, so now we're done with King's Landing. And I'm going to take you guys north where tensions are starting to flare. I don't know why the King of the Vale or the, the Vale and, and everyone is still there. Um, like they don't have to tend to their castles and bring people over because everyone is saying come down to Winterfell and we'll be able to protect you. You know, bring all your stores in, in case when the war starts we have everything you know settled for at least a year plus. Because the war will start, winter is here, we need to have food and protection for everyone. That's fine and dandy. But now the the um the, the general of the Vale and, and I don't know where else are, you know, we should have never made John the king. The king of the north is supposed to be in the north. Why is he still gone? Why are you mad that he's still gone? 
But instead of Sansa stepping up and saying, why are you mad that he's still going to shut up? She's like, no, you made Jonathan, and that's it. That's how she ends everything. Arya sees this. Arya confronts her and says, look, why didn't you step in harder for John? Why didn't you, um, you know, why didn't you try to, like, chop off their heads? Because that's what, that was the first time when Rob did it, right? No, you, you don't do that. You, you implore diplom- diplomacy, and I think that that's what she's doing. But she also may have ulterior motives because... At the end of the day, she may want to be the queen of the north, so she wants to do it. She wants to play it in a way where she's not necessarily oh jumping at the idea, but she's like oh well maybe if I if I do it this way, if I play it this way, you know people oh she's so diplomatic, she knows how to handle things. Let's just go ahead and make her the queen. That might be what angle she's playing. And Arya confronts her about this, and she can't even deny it. Um, turn it around. My man Littlefinger is starting to play the game even harder. Like, he's now noticed that tension. He's pulling on strings here. He's, he's touching this. He's touching that. He finds the letter that uh, Sansa, while she was held captive in uh, King's Landing, sent to Rob when, you know, she writes, uh, I write to you, Rob, with a heavy heart. You know, King Robert is dead from the wounds he took. Um father and and his brother you know tried to steal his strength from stealing from joffrey you know come up and swear fealty and you know bend the knee and you know don't bring strife between the lannisters and the starks that letter may not you know everyone knows that she signed it under duress except Arya for some reason and Arya is supposed to be the smarter one but she somehow misses that point you know she finds the letter she tells littlefinger and she finds the letter but it turns out there's a twist because when she thinks she's, you know, being the smarter one, Littlefinger is obviously still on top of everything, being even, even smarter than she is. It's it's a very interesting episode that ends with John, you know, back in in the north because he because um Bran has you know seen you know used his uh ward's vision and sent probes and seeing the Night King is coming and he's getting closer and so this is so this th- their plan to go steal a night a night walker. A White Walker to go back to Winterfell at the King's Landing and show it to Cersei so she understands. First of all, I don't think Cersei's gonna buy it. I don't think Cersei's gonna go for it. She might say, okay, let's go for it, and then when they get there, kill them. Look, I know for a fact that this isn't gonna work, but it's going to make for interesting TV next week. We're gonna get to see Gendry fight, and Jorah is back. We're gonna get to see him fight. John Tormund. Um, okay, so the reunion I was so the second, the other reunion I was talking about was. Uh, Gendry's united back with the Brotherhood of Without Banners. Um, Beric the Hound, Thoris of Mayor, and, and everyone is re- reunited. And so this is the group that goes out over the wall to go find you know, and capture this walker. And from the preview for the episode that we saw next week, it doesn't look to go down as planned. It doesn't look. Now we may be seeing, may, maybe they've captured him and they're running back. But you saw Beric light his sword up. That was pretty tight. I have to admit, this is going to be a very, very good episode moving forward. I mean, this is what, episode 6, and we're only getting 7, so this might be the ninth episode, because, you know, the ninth episode of every Game of Thrones season is that episode you don't want to miss. This might be episode 9. Anyways, what I really, really liked about this episode is Gendry came, you know, Gendry coming back, you know, because I think they had said, you know, they were done with his story arc, they were done with his line, you know, Gendry coming back and... When he met John, when when they started talking to each other, he's like, "Oh, uh, you you're you know, um, Rob's bastard. You're uh, uh, Ned's bastard. I heard a lot about your father. You look a lot leaner. You're definitely shorter. Like a, a lot of things, you know. Like that whole exchange was pretty epic. Um, seeing what's his name, John's hand. I don't know why I'm missing his name right now. You know, being as smooth as he was, as as nice as he was with the finesse and and being the guy he was, I thought that was pretty epic. You know, John, I'm sorry, not John. Um, yeah, John touching the uh, Jorah's snout, that was pretty epic. Um, um, Jamie and, and Tyrion, you know, that, that reunion was almost like really heartfelt. You know, like, and then Jamie was like, no, just tell me what you want. You know, that was really good. It was really good to see. Littlefinger's gaming in the north is starting to, you know, like it's starting to be really dumb. Because this is something that people should have figured out. Like, I don't know why Littlefinger is still in Winterfell. Like, he should have been gone. But just seeing him play Arya the way, you know, when she thought she was playing him, that was pretty epic. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for next week. I want to see what's going to happen next week. Um, 
you guys should down in the comment section below let me know what you think is going to happen let me know how you think it's all going to happen and what do you think where, where do you think sam is going and what do you think sam is going to discover do you think gilly's going to bring that back up again or do you think bran is going to be the one to finally talk about john's heritage is john vagars or is john agars i don't know you guys know better than me so let me know um that's all that's all I have for you today. It's a very, very good episode. Not better than last week's to me, but a very good episode in its own right. Because of what it does, of what it did. It doesn't it doesn't really do anything in terms of action and a lot of you know, this is more of the game side of things again. And this is a lot of, you know, foreshadowing and and, and uh, reveals and um you know the, the I think this might be the final reunion for the season, but it was a very, very good one. Um let me know what you guys think about it. Again, I rate this episode pretty high. I'll go ahead and give it an 8 out of out of 10. Uh, let me know what you guys rate it. Let me know what you guys think about it. Again, you can find Earth 2 on the social media at on at Earth 2 Comic Cast. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Earth 2 Comic Cast. We're always going to be updating content, throwing stuff out there. So let us know what you think about everything. Um, The podcast is back again this week. We're going to have another great podcast. We're going to probably lift off from where we left uh, left off last week and we're going to go into uh, a lot more topics this week um you can always catch that on audiomag.com i think the link is right here artists earth 2 comic cast oh and then i'm going to drop something in the description bar also so come on there listen and support us over there um that's it that's all for i have for game of thrones peace watch keep watching keep reading and we'll figure it out